I think it's like if the godly parent is the god of a tangible thing, the kid gets powers. But if the god is the god of like an idea, they just get skills? This person is talking about people in the Percy Jackson world, demigod children of the gods, and whether they have actual powers or whether they don't have powers. But some people pointed out in some of my last videos that even when they don't have powers, demigods still have certain skills. But it seemed kind of random, like, why would some demigods just have skills that are not actually powers? And then you have somebody like Percy Jackson who has, like, serious power, like, serious powers over things. But this actually makes sense. This is crazy to think about because it's so, it's so true if you think about it. Like, you think about a child of Zeus, the god of the sky and lightning. His daughter, Thalia, can control lightning. She has an actual power. Same with Percy Jackson. His dad is the god of the sea, a tangible thing, and he can control the sea water. You have gods of non-tangible things, like Athena is the goddess of wisdom and battle strategy, and you guessed it, her children are wise and they're good at battle strategy, <laughs> but they don't have actually any physical powers. Same with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. Her children are good at love and beauty, but they don't have any actual powers. Some of them have charm speak, I'll admit, but that's only a few, that's very rare. This distinction is crazy though, because like, if the god or goddess is just the god or goddess of an idea, their children don't have any powers. Wow, that kind of sucks, I'm not gonna lie. I would way rather be the child of a god who has power over a tangible thing so that I would have power over that thing because that's way more cool and way more fun. 